Today we're working on a 2006 Ford Expedition with a 5.4 liter. We're going to be replacing the front struts and the rear struts on this vehicle. This particular vehicle does not have air ride suspension. So if your vehicle does, then the procedures may be a little different. For the front, it is very helpful to have both sides jacked up at the same time. And that's because of the sway bar length there puts a lot of tension on the suspension. So you want the suspension to flop down as much as possible to get that strut out. So jack up both sides at the same time and then have the suspension uh, drop as much as possible. This is the bottom of the strut tower. The first thing we want to do is see if we can get this nut off. This will be the heaviest torqued nut on this whole job. So you want to make sure you get this off before we start disconnecting anything else because if that can't come off then there's no sense in proceeding this is a 30 millimeter just a little tip if you don't have two 30 millimeters to hold the other side and this side what you can do is take your jack jack up the lower control arm and that'll pinch this bolt that through bolt and then it'll prevent it from spinning so then you can just pull this off without having to hold the other side So now that we got that nut off, we know that we're confident we can get everything else off. So we'll take this tie rod off. This is a 21 millimeter. If your tie rod is just spinning in its socket, you can take a pry bar, put it in between here and push up on it. And that'll, that'll wedge it in its, its little hole here and prevent it from spinning. It also has this little hex tip on there too. You can put a wrench on while you take that off as well. So we got the tie rod out and just suspended to get it out of our way. Next we can come up here and pull these off. There's three, one, two, and then one in the back you can't see. Those are 15 millimeters. We can also blast these with some kind of penetrant to help help them come out. For the front struts, you can also get to these top bolts from under the hood, if that's easier for you. So now that all the bolts are off and the suspension is just hanging there, we can go ahead and tap this out. You can see that it has a tapered end on it, so you can go ahead and tap it a few times. You're okay to hit it without damaging threads or anything else. So we want to get that out. And then this will come out this way. We want to take this uh, steering knuckle move it as far out as we can and then pull it out. Just a warning that that strut is heavy. So when you pull it and it comes out of its little holder here, it's gonna, it's gonna drop. So you have to be ready for the weight and then just watch this boot so it doesn't snag uh, anywhere and rip the boot. It's a beast of a hunk of metal. So just be prepared for that, but push that through and then it'll pull out from the bottom in this direction and then just drop out. So now that we got it out, we want to come underneath where the strut was sitting on the underneath here and just wipe it off. Make sure there's no big uh, rusty stuff and uh, dirt and things like that. So just wipe it off real good before we insert the next one. Because these are so heavy, reinstallation is really difficult. But before you go putting it in, just make sure that these are going to line up and then that's going to line up. If you have it turned around 180, the bottom will line up, but if you look at these top, these aren't going to line up with the holes inside. Um, so it does kind of go one way. So you'll want to put it in up first and get your your studs here to go through those holes and then put your, your nuts on there. I'll show you how to put this bottom in because it takes some prying and some pry bar action for that, but at least the top can go in and then get it secured. So now that we got the new strut in and these are just threaded, we can go ahead and uh, snug them down. So just snug all three of them down, we'll torque them later. But that'll lock the top in place so when we pry on the bottom, it won't keep falling and raising and falling and raising on us. To get the bottom in, it's a combination of things. We'll wanna put a long pry bar here and that'll allow us to push down on the suspension. Then down below, we could take a screwdriver and just make sure it lines up with that notch. And as we push on this, 
we can either take a screwdriver, see Ford has built a really cool lip here, or another small pry bar. I don't know where I put it. There we go. Another small pry bar in there to push it up and in. But the suspension has to be brought down. That, and that, that's really the hardest part. So suspension down, and then you can maneuver this in place. Uh, you could tap on it if you need to. Just don't hit the gas, you know, shock part of it. But this little part here, you know, tap it with a hammer if you need to. Don't wail on it. And then you can move this. And then once you have it kind of in the hole enough, then you can put the screwdriver through the hole into both of them and then kind of pry it in there as well, wiggle it around and then get the nut through. All right, so we got it in. According to Ford, these lock, uh, with the nylon lock washers are one, one time used so when you take them off they should be replaced i talked to the parts guy at ford and he said uh if you are gonna reuse them just use blue loctite so they they are reusable ford recommends just getting a new bolt because of this nylon lock washer but if you're gonna reuse it it's okay with just putting some uh, blue loctite on it it's the same with the uh, tie rod that has a lock washer on it as well for that nut we'll use loctite when we reinstall it so that bolt is torqued to 350 foot-pounds. Once we have that torqued down, we can come do our tie rod, and this is torqued to 111 foot-pounds. To tighten these up top, we can go ahead and put a jack underneath the bottom and load the suspension. So jack up this suspension in the front just uh, enough to give it under some load. And then we'll torque these down to 30 foot pounds. So once those tops are torqued down, that's it. You're good to go. Do the other side, take it for a good spin and job's complete. If you're doing the rear as well, keep watching. I'm gonna jump onto the rear now and start uh, doing that. So the rear is very similar, a little different, but you have three 15 millimeter bolts up top. You have a tie rod down here that needs to be removed. And then this is the through bolt for the um, lower part of the strut. Now, again, I'd recommend trying to bust this loose first before doing anything else. This has a little lock here welded to the nut, so you do not have to hold this side. You just worry about this side only, and that's a 30 millimeter. So we'll buzz that off. So now that that's broken loose and out most of the way, we could take our tie rod off. This is an 18 millimeter. If the tie rod is spinning inside its socket, you could take a pry bar and pry against the top here and that'll prevent that from spinning. So last we can come up here and get these. There's three, one, two, and then one in the back that you can't see and those are 15 millimeters. Now that everything is unbolted, we can wiggle this around, grab it by the spring, wiggle it, and we can pull this bolt out the rest of the way and then be prepared because it'll want to drop. So again, just like the front, uh, this is a heavy unit here, so just be prepared. Uh, there's not really anything on this side that you can damage. There is a brake hose here just to be careful of, but it's not the boot like the front isn't in the way. So let's, uh, Let's do that. So just like the front, make sure you have it the way everything is gonna line up. The bottom's gonna line up and then have your bolts ready for the top. So just like the front, you'll put the top in first, get these studs here to go through their holes and then you'll put the nuts on uh, just, you know, finger tight, give yourself a rest or break if you need, and then we'll continue from there. So those are in. We can go ahead and just snug them down. We won't torque them yet, but we'll go ahead and get them snug. 
and that'll suck the um, the, sh the strut up and then that'll make it easier to to do the bottom so I'll show you the bottom after we snug those tops so once those are snug what we could do is get a pry bar put it right in here and that can move the suspension for us and so then we can tap that in to its little slot there and we have this leverage to adjust our height So before you pound this bolt in all the way, you want to put this back on. If you have this bolt protruding too far, then this nut won't fit back over it. So go ahead and put it on like that, give it a couple taps, and then you can turn this to get it threaded. So now we can tighten this down and then do our tie rod. That bottom bolt is torqued to 295 foot-pounds. Once we have that, we can go ahead and put our tie rod nut back on and that's torqued to 41 foot pounds. So last we want to put a jack under uh, the lower control arm, jack it up to load the suspension and then we'll torque these down to 26 foot pounds. Once those are torqued down double check your work and that's it. Job's complete. Put the tires back on, take it for a good test drive. Hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.